Hello guys, a few days ago I posted about my portfolio website on dev, it got a lot of views and reactions, most of you also joined my youtube channel and suggested that I should create a tutorial on how to create it, I promise that I'll drop a video on it within a week, so here it is, I figured out that this will be a very long video if I created it as one, therefore I decided to make it a series which will have 3 episodes, in this episode we'll create this landing page and the animated side navbar. We will also look at the coding setup and extra resources that will make the portfolio a success. If you haven't seen the portfolio yet, I'll leave a link at the description section below. In case you're new here, my name is Charles, I am a JavaScript developer, a coffee lover, and I create coding content here on YouTube. Now that sounds awesome, so make sure you subscribe and turn on post notification so that you don't miss any of my videos. I will be your instructor in this video and if you want to get in touch, you can do so through my email which is chowcharles at gmail.com or you can find me on Twitter at chowcharles. Before we start writing the code, we will need a code editor. My preferred code editor is Visual Studio Code. I recommend you use the same if you want to have the same coding experience as me. I also created a video on the top 10 Visual Studio Code extensions that I use to improve visuals and functionalities of my coding environment. I recommend you watch it if you haven't and I'll leave a link in the description section below. Now that you have a code editor installed, we can go to our desktops and create a new folder. I'll call this one portfolio. and then open the folder. Now what I want is to open this folder on Visual Studio Code and I'll show you a shortcut on how to do that. Click at the path at the top here, type cmd, enter. This will open the command prompt and all you need to do is to use this command code and a period which will open our folder on Visual Studio Code. Now here we are and you can see that we are inside the portfolio folder. Let's add a new file index.html enter and then I'll create a HTML sample using control space. For now all I'll do is to edit the title ciao Charles and I'll add at the end here front-end developer next what I want to show you is how you can import Google fonts on our project and then how we can import uh, font awesome so that we can use font awesome icons in our project let's start with font awesome just search for fontawesome.com and uh, sign up for an account and you can start for free. To use Font Awesome, uh, the easiest way is to create a kit and to create a kit, you will add the project name right here and click this button, create and use this kit. So I can't create another kit because I have already created one and to create another one, I have to pay for that. So just create a kit and then go to your profile at the top here, go to kits and you'll see your kits right here. Click the kit that you created and you'll see instructions on how to use the kit and all you need is to copy this code and add it at the head tags of our HTML file. So go to the HTML file and then I'll add that code right there. Now we can be able to use font awesome icons on our project. Next, let's see how we can import Google fonts because we'll be using two types of font families which aren't available by default. So I'll go back to my browser, go to Google fonts. The first one is Poppins. So search for Poppins if you want to use the same font. I'll select it 
and then choose a style i'll use the regular style select it and it will be added on our selected font families right there but i still need to add another font so i'll go back to google fonts and search for share tech mono okay right here select it select this style and it will be added at our selected font families now uh, some links will be auto created for us to use these two fonts you can link on a html file using this code or you can use import on a css file i prefer using uh, this import i'll copy what is between the style tags copy now let's go back to our code editor and create a css file i'll create a main.css file enter and this file have already been linked on my html file pay attention to line 8 here you can see href main.css so in my main.css at the very top i'll paste that link right there so now we will be able to use those two fonts in our project which is poppins and share tech mono in this section i want us to talk about the cool graphics that i used on my portfolio and as you can see i added a new folder called images on my portfolio folder and when i click it i added all the graphics and images that i'll be needing now i want to show you uh, the resources that i used and uh, how i customized these graphics so that you can also do the same on your projects so when i go to my portfolio website at the background you can see that cool background and then on my projects i we have clear png images here which i used and the site that uh, i used to get these images is called andro andro have a lot of svg and png resources that you can access for free and uh, you can make use of them on your projects so when i go to browse now you can see all these svg and png resources that are here which you can make use of them now to show you this background uh, image that i used i will search here code enter and you can see it's exactly this one but i did some tweaks because uh, this dude here is not on my background so one of the things that i want to show you is how to edit this uh, graphic because you can download it as png the way it is or you can download it as an svg and uh, do your own tweaks to, to the graphic the software that you can use to customize this further is figma so figma is totally free you can use it to customize that graphic further or you can use another software called inkscape which is also totally free and this is the one that i'm going to show you with but also using figma is totally fine and uh, if you get stuck with inkscape or if you want to know more about it you can uh, use tutorials by this dude access his website logosbynick.com and he have cool tutorials on inkscape which are totally free and uh, the reason that i'm telling you this is because being a front-end developer you also need to have this uh, design skills let's download this image and i show you how to edit it so i'll download it as svg download and then i will open my inkscape and uh, i will drag and drop it right here so at the top here we have different options we have a group selected object or ungroup selected groups so what i want to do is to ungroup this one so i'll click that and you can see that it's now divided into different sections and i 
can edit each of them so what i want is to select the whole of this uh, diode and delete also i want to delete this one i select it and delete so this is exactly what i have as my background on that portfolio landing page but i want to mention that if you don't like the colors you can edit them so like you can select this one and change the color and basically you can change the color of any uh, section in this svg so i can make maybe this one to be green you can see that we can tweak anything that we want here so please make sure you make use of andro and also use inkspace or figma to customize your svgs now what you can do is to go at the top and then export this file as png image so we will have a window open here and then you can select the location that you want to export this file i can go to desktop and change this one to maybe landing page save so this will change the location and then you hit export now when i go to my desktop here it is so that is how you can customize your graphic further uh, for them to suit your needs then i'll go back to the browser and uh, what i want to talk about is how i created my logo how i created this logo was very quick and the site that you can use is called logomaker.com without an e here you can design your own logo on your portfolio which is a good way of blending yourself right here you can search over 1 million graphics so they have anything that you can think of i can search for coffee enter and you can see all these uh, coffee graphics that are here and you can select any of them i will just do an example not a read thing i'll select this one and then i can search for code and you can see all these awesome graphics that are available so i just want to uh, create something close to what i have i can select this one and then uh, just something cross not exactly the same i can make this one to be wide and place a coffee uh, right there something like that this is just to show you how you can create a simple logo and my screen have a problem i'm sorry for that you can see clearly it have like scratches i don't know so you can also add text coffee and cord you can change the color and uh, you can select any let me use this one and then you can change the font so we have a lot of font families here you can select that one I can make it smaller and bring it at the bottom here so this is a cool cool website that you can use to create logos totally free but if you want your logo as an svg you will have to pay for it but you can access the png version of it totally for free so how to download it go here save logo and you can download it the low resolution file but uh it's okay because it's free and uh because you'll keep it a small image it won't be blurry okay but if you want to have the high resolution and extra files you can uh, just download the file at a fee the next thing that i want to talk about is the favicon the favicon are these small images that are uh here as you can see for dev for youtube for twitter and also you can make your own favicon it's not recommended to use a, an image here a png image because uh, the file is big 
So what you can do is to convert it to a smaller file called favicon and you can use this site favicon.io to convert your logo into a favicon. All you need to do is to drag and drop your logo right here and then you download it. You will download it as a zipped file so all you need is to unzip. The last thing that I'll talk about is the profile picture. So if I come to Charles, Charles and open this side nav bar, you can see I have a perfect circle for my profile pic. And also right here I have a perfect circle uh, for that pic. And uh, for you to have this perfect circle, you will need a square image. On Windows, you can open the image by default using this image reader for Windows. I'm not sure for Mac. And then you can crop the image. And right here, you'll have options uh, of the aspect ratio that you want. Select the square one and reposition your image properly. And then when we go to CSS, we will be able to make this a perfect circle. So that's it for this section. In the next section, we'll start getting our hands dirty with the code. Now you know where to get the graphics for your project and also how to design a simple custom logo for your portfolio or project. I will still leave a link to the resources that I am using in this project and I will leave the link at the description section below. So check it out if you want to follow along. In this section, we will lay out the HTML structure of our side navbar together with the logo here. So let's open our HTML files. And the first thing that I will do is to open this HTML file with a live server. A live server is a Visual Studio Code extension that auto refreshes the browser depending on the settings. So it can be on save or on delay. So mine I have set to be on delay. So you will see the changes as uh, I type. So I'll open with a live server and uh, close this to create extra space. And uh, the first thing that we will do is to add favicon. To do that, we will do it at our head section. I will add a link, rel will be equal to shortcut icon. And then the type will be image slash x icon. And then href will be equal to images. And then I will look for my favicon icon and uh, I'll close this link. Now let's continue to our body section and I'll add a header tag. And then inside this header, I will add a div with a class of container. So this is a shortcut to do this dot container will create a div with the class of container. Hit enter and you can see. And then inside this div, I will add a nav tag. And then inside the nav tag, I will add two divs. One will be for the logo. The other div will be for our hamburger menu icon. And then I'll add a ul which will contain our links. So let's do that. So I'll add a div with a class of navbland dot navbland. Enter. And then inside here, I can now link to my uh, logo a href. 
So basically what this will do is to refresh the page when you click the logo, okay? So I link this one to index.html and then in here I can place that logo. IMG source will be equal to images and then I will look for my logo logo.png and uh, I'll add an alt so an alt will appear when the image is not found so let help just say ciao and I'll cross this so you can see that the image have already been added and then let's create the next div which will contain our hamburger menu icon it have a class of uh, burger menu icon so i'll say burger menu icon enter and that will form a div and then inside here I will include three divs which will be basically the lines for that hamburger menu icon you can simply use an, an icon from font awesome here but we want to create a custom icon like this one which is very cool so let's do this i'll add a div with the class name of line one dot line one enter and it's not going through so i'll cop i'll code it manually div with the class of line one and then i'll cross the div that way and i'll select the whole of this one copy and paste it uh, two more times and I'll delete this extra space and change this one to line 2 and this one to line 3 so we will style this one using CSS that's why you can't see anything right there okay now let's add a UL which will have our nav items or links. So this UL will have a class of uh, nav list. What you can do is to say UL dot nav list. Enter and it will form that tag with the class. And then inside here, we will have uh, li items with a class of nav item so li dot nav item enter and there we go inside the first li we will have uh, our image so when i open this one this is the first li which is having an image and a caption so let's first add this image and uh, just to mention again this image will contain a link to our landing page so let's say i navigate to another section maybe projects and uh, i come back to the nav and click this image it will uh, take us to the landing page so this will contain a link okay so let's add the link first a href will contain uh, a link to the landing page so here we will use hash landing page this will be the id of the landing page okay that way and uh, we close that inside the links now we can add our image so img the source will be equal to images and then we go to profile pick dot jpg and then alt will be equal to 
Ciao Charles. And it will have uh, two classes. The first one will be profile pick. And then the second one will be a nav link. And uh, I can close this image. When I save this file, you can see that the code have been auto uh, formatted by my code formatter, which is prettier. Still on this A tag after the image, we will add a caption using the span tag. So right here, I'll say span with the class of uh, caption. And this one will also be a nav link. And uh, this will be Chow Charles. You can see that the image was added and it's so big. We will style it later using uh, CSS and also the, the caption was added right there. Let's continue to our next nav item. So li.nav item, enter, we'll have a link also, a href. This will take us to hash. Services. And then it will have a class of navlink and we will call this one services okay that way now we have other links which are similar to this one and uh, what I'll do I'll just copy this and paste several times at the bottom we can add a link to projects. I will jump these videos because this takes you to the to my YouTube channel. So I'll go directly to contact. And uh, then we'll have another LI item with uh, some icons, social icons. So I'll also add it. And uh, I trust we'll have a button. Let's customize each one of these. This will be hash about. And this one will be about. This one will be uh, services. This one will be projects. And this one will be projects. This one will be contact. And this one will be contact. Now this one uh, will be special because we have uh, several links inside it. This will take us to uh, a different site from where we are. So what I'll do, I'll just leave this one as hash and you can add your own link. And then uh, to open this on a different page, we use target. And we usually give it a value of uh, underscore blank. And then I realized that I made a very big mess with my class name here. 
so what I can do is to select this one and then I'll hit Control D so I can edit multiple times okay you see and then I'll delete and uh, spell class collector cool we were on this uh, nav item target blank and then a class of nav link and then inside here we will uh, add an icon when I save it will be auto formatted so let's see if this icon was added I will scroll I will refresh cool it was added that icon was added and then I will copy this one uh, multiple times so I'll copy there and then I'll copy again and the only thing that I'll do is to change the class name so the next one is for dev which will be fab far dev and the other one will be for Twitter which will be fab for Twitter now let's uh, add this button which is uh, right here we'll style this button later with CSS for now I'll create it as a div so a div with a class name of CTA so dot CTA enter and then enter we will have a link so it's an a which uh, will have a href of uh, where you want to link the user I'll leave this one as hash and then target blank and it will have a class of nav link and also a class of btn okay so that way and then the text inside here will be whatever you want so buy me a coffee i'll check it and we'll style it later to look uh, exactly like a button now that is the html structure for our nav this one html structure for this nav and also for this logo right here so you can see the power of css already because this page looks very awful without css and the next section will now start styling this uh, particular page go to the main.css file and remember i had already linked this file to the index.html file so uh, we had already imported two fonts that is poppins and sharetech mono and uh, right here i'll start by adding global styles so i will add a comment so that you know the section that we are in and i'll call this one global styles and uh, i'll use a star this will select all uh, the html element in the page and then i'll add a star and i'll add the pseudo element before so this will select all the befores and also i'll add the after this is also a pseudo element after so i'll give them a margin of zero i'll also give them a padding of zero and then box sizing i'll say 
inherit let's go to HTML and here I'll set the default uh, font for for the whole page so font family and uh, I will use one of the font that we imported which is share tech mono and then if share tech mono is not available uh, we will use monospace so right here I'll say mono space okay and you can see that the font have already changed uh, right here okay let's continue I'll give it I'll give a default font size for the whole page which is font size of 12 px and then I'll say box sizing to be border box scroll behavior to be smooth and uh, the text color this will be for all text by by default uh, will be hash e7 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 and then i'll give a background color of rgb 19 19 19 so it's dark background color now let's go right here and select all our a tags and uh, we'll say text text decoration to be none to remove all the text decoration so you can see the underlines have gone and then we will add a color which will be rgb rgb this will be 3 155 five, 155 five. cool and you can see this is uh, my theme of choice so I'm trying to stick to this uh, color right here and uh, this is also the color that is right here and the one that is also on my youtube channel banner so it's kind of a theme you can choose your own theme okay and then let's go to uh, at the bottom here and select all uh, ul and we'll say list style to be none so you can see that the spacings uh, have gone then let's go and select uh, all p tags this is global styling so we haven't gone to customizing uh, our navbar so i'll give them a font size the p tags i'll give them the font size of uh, 1.4 rem and then let's go to the image img and the images we give them the width of 100% so you can see the image have kind of uh, reduced in size and then we give them a max width of 100%
and uh, the height will be auto now let's start styling our header which is this one uh, right here which have our logo this one the logo the logo and this line and also we'll uh, later come to our icon our hamburger icon right there okay so I'll add a comment because we are now out of the global styling and I'll call this one header and uh, I place this one in our correctory that way so I'll select the header and uh, let's give it a width of 100% a height of uh, 5 5 frame okay let me go back here so that you see the changes as they happen then position will be absolute top zero left zero a z index of one and then let's select the container which will have a, a width of 100% max width will be 90 rem a margin top and bottom will be zero and then left and right will be outer a padding top and bottom will also be zero and left and right will be 1.5 rem Let's go to uh, styling the nav or let's start with this logo which is nav blunt, right? So if I move uh, the top, the logo was the nav brand right here. So let's start by that. So nav brand. We give it a width of 7 rem. So you can see now it's a smaller, which is cool. And then let's now start styling the nav. Remember, this image is also in the nav, so we are coming to it. Or we can start by styling this image so that it stops filling the page. Okay so dot profile pick okay we'll give it a height of 9 rem oops i look awesome a width that i said a width of auto Cool. So it's much smaller. Let's add uh, some few more styling. Border radius will be 50%. Remember, I told you to make this one um, a square, a square uh, image. 
so that this border radius will create a perfect circle now you can see how nice it is and then uh, display will be block and margin Our top and bottom will be 1.5 rem and uh, left right will be zero so you can see that now this is coming through let's uh, style the nav and I'll put it at the top it makes sense because the image is inside the nav so I just wanted to clear uh, the space there so I'll select the nav and uh, add a width of 100%. Okay, the suggestion is rust 100%. We will display our items as flex. So display flex. align items we want them to be at the center so this nav uh, contains uh, okay let me check it contains the logo and uh, nav it contains our logo right there it contains our hamburger uh, menu icon and also the uh, our nav links so what we are trying to do is to create this uh, to be positioned on this side and this one to be on the other side together with these nav links so let's go ahead and what i'll do is to justify content to be space between so you can see there we go our logo now is, is on this side and our nav rings are on the other side let's create a padding of one rem top and bottom and zero left right so we have some spacing at the top and then uh, border bottom let's add this line right here so what we will do is to just add a border bottom border bottom is it there i want it to be 2px solid uh, I want it to be a bit transparent, so I'll use RGBA. Two five five, two five five, two five five, and a point two. Not zero, but point. So there we go. You can see this uh, line right there. Okay, let's select. Uh, line one let's create our menu icon the hamburger menu icon so right here we'll select line one and give it a width of 15 px a height of 3px a margin uh, this is top and bottom will be 5px and then left right will be 0 
let's create a background which will be linear gradient linear gradient because we have it you want it to be a mixture of two colors so inside here I'll give it one that five degrees comma RGBA two forty nine one of five fourteen and uh, one and then this will begin from zero percent the next color will be RGB which will be 255 this is white and this will go for uh, 100 percent you can already see it here so let's just complete that way so that is our first line let's go to the second line so line 2 and this one will uh, be longer than this one so line 2 is the center one which is longer than the top and the bottom one so we can add a width of 30px a height of 3px and then the background will also be linear and uh, it will be similar as this one so I can just copy this one and paste it here so there we go the line is longer let's create the other line which will have uh, a similar styling as line one and uh, we will only change a few things so i'll just copy line one come below line two and uh, paste there and say this is uh three wait uh, i didn't okay there it is now let's change a few things width will be 15 height will be 3 margin will be 5px top and bottom and 0 left right let's add a margin left of 15px so that it will go to the other side and then the background will be the same so you can see that this is now coming through uh, like the one we have here awesome so let's now select the whole of this uh, what I mean by the whole of this is uh, let me show you what we were selecting and styling are these line ones okay now let's select uh, the whole of this by using this class burger menu icon so that we can add a background and position them together at the right place and add this uh, casa styling okay so i'll go back to the css just after line three i will add uh, i will select burger menu icon and uh, the first thing we can do is to set the cursor to be pointer so that when i hover over it we know that uh, it's kind of a link then i want it to be 
to appear at the top of uh, everything all the content in the page so I'll give it a Z index of 999 so that will make it to be at the top of the page position I want it to be fixed so it won't scroll with the content when I scroll you can see that our menu will remain okay this is what I want it remains right there so we'll give it a position of uh, fixed then you can see it have uh, repositioned itself but let's put it where we want it so I'll say right to be zero top to be zero so you can see it's already at the top but it's too close to the corner so we'll add some padding and some background let's start with the background so background we'll say we want it to be a bit transparent so we'll use rgba 55 55 55 and then alpha will be 0 0.5 So this will make it transparent. It's not clear because the background is dark, but uh, it will come through. Let's add a padding on all direction of uh, 1.2 rem. And you can see now it's not at the very corner. Let's add uh, a border radius so that it's curved right here so border radius oops radius top will be zero percent right will be zero percent our bottom will be zero percent and left will be 40% uh, percent. okay so there we go now let's select our caption here so after the profile pick I'll select caption and set it to block so display block and then let's select the nav list dot nav list we add a width of 24m We add a height of 100 VH so it will occupy the whole uh, height here of the page and then let's add a background so that you can clearly visualize it background color of hash two 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 position will be fixed top will be zero so you can see it's now coming along but we want it to be on the other side for now I'll say right to be zero two but we will edit it later and we want to hide it okay and then let's style these uh, nav, nav items so I'll say display 
to be flex so they have arranged in a row let's change that to be quorum flex direction to be column so they are back in track and then we align the item to be at the center yeah cool there we go and we justify content we could say to be at the center but i'll say to be at uh, the start so it won't make a change in the moment and then let's add a z index so what i want is that this nav bar i want it to be at, at the top of all the content except this one and remember we added a z index of this one to be 99 nine so i'll press this one to be 998 okay so that it's below uh, this button 998 uh, and then transition all 650 millisecond and then is in out okay you can see some effect already now let's select uh, a nav list dot active class which will add when uh, we want to display and hide this one so i'll just add it uh, right now but it won't have any effect at the moment when we add javascript you'll see uh, what it does so i'll say nav list dot active so this active class is what will help us to cross and open the menu. So when it's active, we'll say write to be zero. And then when it's not active, it means that this write will change it to be something like negative 20. Uh, the width of this now is 24. So when we say 26 RAM, it will be hidden so you can see that it disappears so when this uh when this active class is there uh it will appear so that is the the logic behind it but for now because we still need to see this uh nav bar when styling let's return this one to zero let's select these links so uh, at the bottom here First, I'll select the nav item and then I'll select the links. So, dot nav item. What we want to do is to just give them some spacing between. So, margin, I want it to be top and bottom of 1.2 rem and then left right to be zero. So this will create the spacing between these links. And uh, did I miss the spelling of margin? Okay, there is no E. Cool, there we go. You can see that there is no cool spacing between them. Okay. Let's now select individual nav link. So dot nav link. will give it an opacity opacity of one at the moment but we will change it later when you want to animate it so when i say opacity of zero they will disappear but when i say opacity of one they will be there so uh, because we still need to sell them i leave it at one but we'll change it later to zero so i change the font size to be 1.3 ram so 
so it's now bigger i transform i transform the text to uh, uppercase text transform will be uppercase okay it's not orientation it's transform there we go let's change the initial color to be whitish so color hash c e c e c e so it's whitish and then let's add letter spacing to be 1.5 px so now it looks awesome right let's add a hover effect so right here I'll say dot nav link on hover. So we'll change the color to be RGBA. Two four nine. 105 14 and opacity is 1 so on hoover there we go so the hoover effect have been activated so so far so good this is coming uh, together to be almost uh, what we have here so you can see it's all coming together so from here the styling that remains are uh, for the animations and uh, for now i would just want to open and cross this uh, navbar so the part that remain for opening and crossing the navbar is javascript so i'll create a new file called main dot js and this file have already been linked to my html file so if i come to html file and minimize this one come at the top okay okay here it is script slc main.js so it's already linked so let's start working with some javascript and uh, right here I'll add a comment function expression select element these are uh, constants that will help us to easily select an element instead of using uh, the wrong method so i guess the spelling is correct and then right here we'll create a constant select element which will be equal to it will receive it will receive a, a parameter and this parameter is either a class name or uh, an element or uh, an ID so it can receive any of those and then this will represent document dot query selector and uh, this query selector is that particular parameter that we, we pass here okay 
and then I'll add another one const nav links so I'll use this later when we are animating our nav links so nav links will be equal to document dot query selector document dot query selector all okay and this one will receive uh, the nav links I missed a spelling here so let's now uh, go to opening and closing this side nav bar enter I will use now our constant select element and uh, what we want to select is this burger burger uh, hamburger menu so we added a class of burger menu icon and then we add an event prisoner which is on click so that when we click that hamburger menu something happens okay so add event prisoner i hope the spelling is correct and the event prisoner that we are adding is click so after this we will add a callback function and set what happens when we click it okay so this is a callback i will uh, decrease the font size so that you see everything clearly and still it doesn't work so i'll increase this one okay so inside here we want to do something and what we want is to toggle the class active add and remove that class active okay that is what will help us to show and hide this side nav bar so i'll say select element nav list nav list is our side nav bar and then dot class list so this will help us to change the class dot class list dot toggle active so in quotes active yep that way so what is happening here is that we are adding an on click event on this hamburger menu icon so when i click we have a callback function of what will happen we are selecting our nav bar which will then uh, add an active class and when we click it again it will remove that class okay that is what is basically happening there so right now uh, it won't have an effect until we change our CSS so remember class active here is right zero and this one is also zero so this is the one that we will change to be negative 26 rem okay let's see if it works so when I click and uh, nothing happens let me check my javascript so this is supposed to have a dot because it's a class so i missed that let's try again still nothing happens i might have another error so i have realized that our code is okay what we need to do is to come to index.html file and change the position of our script tags so i'll cut this and then paste it just before we close the body and that is all we need to do let's try this 
when I click this one now it works it opens and crosses our uh, side nav bar the next thing that I want us to do is to change uh, the icon here from hamburger menu icon to a cross icon when it opens to do that we will be adding a class using javascript called toggle class and uh, first we need to style that class so i'll go to my main.css file and then select that class dot toggle and set the background to none and the background is this uh, right here so background none now we can use this class when uh, this class is active we manipulate our lines here to form an x so we'll be manipulating the first line and the last line and then we will hide the middle line okay so let's start by the first line so toggle toggle dot line one and what we will do here we will use transform uh, to be rotate negative 45 degrees we change its position using translate negative 5 px and 6 px so this is x y and then we increase its size using scale x to be 2 so this will modify the length of this line by 2 now let's hide the second line dot toggle dot line 2 opacity will be 0 let's go to the last line here and the styling will be similar to the line 1 so I'll copy this one and all we need to do is to change some values this one will be positive 45 degrees this one will be negative 6 px and also we will add a margin left of uh, 0 px so let's add this class using javascript so we'll come to main.js file and then after this one we will select our hamburger menu icon and then we toggle a class name select element dot burger menu icon dot class list dot toggle and then we use that class that we styled toggle so this should now work uh, let's try and uh, it seems we missed something our x did didn't come through and uh, let's see what we did long so okay this is the error here this is supposed to be line three okay let's see still it's not uh, perfect let's see what's wrong 
okay this is supposed to be margin left so i'll change this one to left and there we go now it's a perfect x so this is now working the way we want the next thing that we will do is to animate our links these links right here so to do that we need to create a css animation and uh, i'll do it just at the bottom here we use at keyframes we give our animation a name we can call it navlink animate and then the beginning will be from and the end of the animation will be to or you can use percentage from 0% to 100% but this will work so right here we'll start from opacity 0 to opacity 1 and then we transform transform translate fifty px this will change its its original position and then right here we will take it back to its original position so transform translate this one will be uh, zero px So this is all we need to do in our CSS. Now let's consume our animation using JavaScript. So open main.js file and then after this one, still when we select our hamburger menu icon and click it, we need to perform some animation. So right here, we will use for each. So right here, we'll use nav links dot for each so here we can receive uh, an individual link and also we have access to index and this index is the position of each link okay so i'll put this in brackets and then crossing bracket and then here we can use an arrow function and do something here so just to show you uh, what index is you can do a console.log uh, index so I open the console and then uh, when I click okay console and when I click this one you can see that these are the indexes and it's the position of each of our nav link. So these indexes will help us to create a, a smooth delay for each of our links. So let me show you how we will do that. And right here, I remove this console and then we need to perform a check if an animation exists so if link dot style dot animation or oh, oops if link dot style dot animation so this will return either true or false if it's true it means that an animation exists and what we will do is to remove that animation by setting link dot style dot animation to be an empty string okay and then if it doesn't exist we will perform an else we set that animation here link dot style 
dot animation and uh, here we'll use backticks so add a backtick and a closing backtick inside here use the name of our animation which is navlink animate navlink animate we give it a duration 5 0.5 seconds is forwards and then now we can set a delay using the index so we use this dollar sign and then carry brackets we select the index and divide it by a number maybe a seven and then we can add a default so I'll say plus 0 0.5 uh, seconds. So this will create a cool uh, delay for each link, which will uh, be a smooth animation. So just to show you right here, we can, we can console.log, console.log, I will select uh, this the content which is right here copy and then paste it inside this save so when I click this one you can see it's kind of animating already and uh, let's console.rog we see what is happening behind the hood console I'll click and then you can see this is the time of delay for each of the animation so this create a consistency for our links so that uh, one doesn't have more time for delay than the other so this is cool let's fix one issue which is we don't want to see our links even before they uh, animate to do that we'll go to main.css file and look for our nav link and change the opacity to zero so initially we won't see the links and then our animation will do the magic it will change the opacity from zero to one so i'll cross and open and cool so this is now working the next thing that we will do is to start uh, creating the HTML structure for our uh, landing page. Now that our side navbar is working, let's start uh, creating our landing page. So after the header, I'll add uh, a new tag called main. And then we add uh, a section tag with a class of landing page. So I'll say section dot landing page, enter. And then we'll also add an ID of landing page. So ID will be equal to landing page and this will enable us to scroll back to uh, this landing page using hash landing page and I can show you right here so you can see hash landing page is pointing to this particular ID here okay so inside the section tag we will add a div with a class of container enter and then this inside this will add another div with a class of main message dot main message 
enter and uh, then inside here is where we'll place our different uh, content so we'll, we'll add this name uh, the role and all this stuff okay so let's start by adding uh, a h2 and this h2 will uh, be Chow Charles so you can use your name here and then we add a h3 and this one will be front end so i'll include the curly brackets and then front end web developer and then we'll add a p tag which will contain uh, these uh, languages here so that is html html uh, space period css and this is a uh, capital period javascript period react period gatsby okay so you can see the content is being added uh, at the top here let's continue now after the, the p tag we can now include our buttons so uh, this will be a div with a class name of intro btn so dot intro btn enter and then inside here we can now create our uh, buttons so the first one will have a class name of cta that is a div with a class name of cta we'll style these buttons using css and then this will have a link uh, with the class name of btn so a dot btn enter and then it will have a href which will point to the contact hash contact and then it will have a message get in touch that way and then the next btn uh, will be similar to this one so i'll just copy then paste and this one now will point to a different location so uh, mine i have uh, placed it to be to point to my youtube channel but you can place this one to point to your projects or services so uh, we can point this one to projects so projects and then here we say my projects or projects you have worked on or projects only just choose uh, the words that you want to use and then outside the intro button we'll have another div with the class name of scroll down and uh, that is this uh, particular icon here so uh, let's add it so this is a div with the class name of scroll down enter and then inside here 
okay sorry this class is for will be for the link that we are going to press inside here so i remove it and uh, let it be a plain div and then inside here okay i'll tab then a dot scroll down enter and the href will point to uh, the section that is just below uh, the landing page which in this case is about and you can change this one to be projects or any any uh, section that you want to be just below the landing page okay and then uh, inside here now we can add the icon so I'll say I with a class of uh, far far chevron down now this is a font awesome class name okay and then so we can add this area hidden will be equal to true so this is for accessibility purposes and it's not a must you add it so okay i'll just add it there and then we close that eye so you can see that uh, button uh, that icon is very small right there so now the next step is uh styling our html because we have added every section on our landing page now let's go to the main.css file and start styling our landing page i'll start with a comment landing page just to let you know the different sections and then we go below there so let's select the landing page class dot landing page and then we'll give it a width of 100 percent a height of 100 vh So this will occupy the entire height. And then let's now set the background and uh, we'll say background will be a linear gradient. So linear gradient. And then inside here, we'll say 135 degrees, comma, RGBA will be 0 64 and then it will be a little bit transparent so 0 0.9 so that we can be able to see the background picture and this will be from 0 percent comma RGBA And here I'll say 0, 0, 0. Actually, this is dark. And then we make it to be uh, a transparent. This will go up to 100%. So, yeah, you can see that it has changed to what we have here now we still need to add that background image so just after uh, this uh, linear we'll add a comma and then i'll enter and say url will be images and then we look for the landing page png so you can see already it have been added but we need to position it nicely 
so uh, at the end here I'll say center and then now repeat and I close that one at the bottom here we'll add a property which is a background size so you can see now it's better you can see the whole image and then uh, position to be relative okay cool now let's uh, style our different text and uh, bring it uh, right here and also do other stuff so let's start by selecting the main message class which involves all this text that we have so dot main message and we'll give it a width of a hundred percent so width will be equal to a hundred percent and then we give it a max width okay so max width will be equal to 58 okay 58 ram text transform uh, this one will be uppercase so everything will be in capital yeah and then position we want this to be positioned uh, absolute so this will be absolute to the landing page position and then let's center this text so left will be 50 percent okay what am i doing left will be 50 percent and then top will be 50 percent 50 oops 50 percent so you can see already it's coming along but it's still uh, sideways so here we'll do a transform and then translate negative 50 percent and then negative 50 percent then we can say text align to be center so there we go it's now a uh, perfect tree uh, at the center now let's uh, select individual tags let's start with the name i'll come down here and say dot main message and then h uh, this is this was h2 so h2 we give it a uh, letter spacing letter spacing of 1.2 rem and then we give it a font size font size uh, of uh, 2 rem so it's much bigger we give it a font weight of uh, 400 point weight of 400 so it's a uh, less bold and then I want to start adding animations and uh, 
what I can do I'll add these properties overflow uh, will be hidden and then white space will be and white space will be no wrap and then let's start uh, creating an animation at the bottom here so this animation is uh, we use at keyframes in CSS and we will call it typing and I already have a video on creating a CSS animation you might want to check that on my YouTube channel if you want to go into much details because uh, I won't go into too much details in this one so right here uh, we can start the animation from 0% and then the width we set the width of uh, this animation to be zero character to start with and then the color to be RGBA RGBA and to start with we'll set this one to be 249 Okay, so this is uh, is it orange? Yeah, and then uh, two will be a hundred percent, and then uh, we set the width, so we'll change the width to be twenty seven characters, and this is because uh, we have doubled the number of characters. So, because we also changed the font size and uh, some properties like the font weight, so um, this is uh, you can play along with the characters until it fits uh, the right range of your name. Let's uh, use this animation at the top here, and I uh, will say animation. We will use this animation which is typing and then we set the time 5 seconds so you can see it's already kind of animating which is really cool and then uh, we want it to use steps so uh, steps will be the also the number of characters that we used so inside here I'll say 27 so you can see it's typing now and dragging along and then uh, right here I'll add the width of our h2 so width will be 27 character let's add a margin of auto so that it's at the center margin will be equal to auto so there we go our animation is working uh, and uh, you can see it's typing so there is a trick that I did when I refresh it's uh, start deleting <laughs> and then displace the name so what I did there I just changed this one from 0% to 75% and I was just playing around with it and I saw this was cool so there we go another thing is that uh, here there is a blinking cursor so let's add this cursor blinking cursor so we will create a new animation using at keyframes so at keyframes and uh, this one we can call it uh, blink and then we'll have from and to the way we will achieve this 
is by using uh, the border so right here I'll say border which is border right okay so we'll set it to be 4px solid and we give it a color which is a uh, white so I'll just say I can use RGBA which will be 255 255 255 0 and then we'll set a 2 border uh, okay border right now this will be the same so this have an opacity of zero so it won't be visible and that's why it's uh, dark and then right here we'll uh, set the border to be 4px solid RGB this one will be 194 194 194 so this will uh, will be grayish and this one won't be visible because it have an opacity of 0 so uh let's come and use this animation we can use multiple animation right here by uh, a comma separation so comma blink and then it will go for one second is in out and then we give it a delay of uh eight seconds and because we used here here we use five seconds so you can give a delay of uh, I think uh, seven seconds will do so uh, one two so it's right here at the end okay it appeared only once we need to make that one to be infinite okay so infinite so it's at the very very end here and uh, I guess we missed something somewhere because I want this to be spaced out this uh, these letters like the way you have spacing between them so letter spacing okay I just removed the space between so you can see we have cool spacing between the letters and now it's uh, working so this is cool uh, I guess we have achieved uh, the animation so you can take a look at it again and uh, yeah let's continue to this front-end web developer so that was main message h3 okay so right here at the bottom we'll say dot main message h3 we give it a font size of 4 rem so this will be much big yeah but on mobile we'll make it smaller so that it can fit nicely so don't worry this is the desktop version then we give uh, a margin top and bottom so that there is nice spacing margin of one rem and then left right will be zero so this is coming along and then let's now uh, handle 
the color first I uh, will say the color to be RGBA and uh, this will be 2 a foot 9 105 14 so initially it's orange and then we want to add the gradient this nice uh, gradient right here and uh, we'll change this default color to be this gradient using a background so this is how we do it we'll say linear gradient and then inside here we'll say to write and I forgot a semicolon here and then comma RGBA uh, will be uh, this one which is uh, this color so that will be on the left and then this will be from 0% going to the right we'll change this one to be purplish so RGBA again will be uh, 1 or 2 and then 15 or 51 153 and then uh, it will have an opacity of 1 so this will be to 100 percent but you can see that uh, the effect is happening at the background of this text so to fix this uh, to be used on our text we need to add a few lines of code at the bottom here so hyphen webkit hyphen background background clip so it will clip the background to be only along the text so text uh, and uh, you can see that it have now disappeared so we still need to add uh another line of code here to make this text transparent and we can only see the background that is behind the text okay because we have clipped it to be only uh, behind the text okay so use this line of code webkit text uh, text fill and this one will be text fill color will be transparent okay sorry transparent that way and there we go so now we are seeing the background through the text that is what is happening here okay okay cool now we have achieved our second objective there with our main message let's now go to this one and uh, we'll select this was the p tag so this won't have a lot of styling just a few lines of code like two or three dot main message p and this one will have a text transform of a text transform of none so we will have small caps and uh, the normal text that we entered in our HTML and then we set the font size to be 1.7 rem and then we set the font weight
okay sorry font weight uh, to be 400 and that will do so this is the desktop version of our landing page but we are not done yet we still need to style the buttons and the arrow down so there is something that I, I have realized with our animation when I refresh uh, we can't see the cursor right so unlike here you can see the cursor so mm -hmm. I'm thinking what I did wrong uh, let's first fix that real quick before we come to our buttons border uh, right will be 4px solid this will be now white the easiest way okay I can set to be this one but I remove the alpha here and change it to one okay so now we have it uh, let's come at the bottom here and uh, style the buttons I'll start with the dot intro bit n so this will be both our divs and what I want to do is to place them side by side so what we'll do is uh, display flex so display display flex and there we go they are side by side but we need to bring them back to the center justify content to be center and uh, okay <laughs> I missed the spelling here justify that way and there we go they are at the center now let's go and select individual buttons and uh, right here I'll say dot btn and uh, remember this btn will also style our uh, buy me a coffee this one right here so this will be a kind of a global style we'll set the margin left right to be zero okay zero is top bottom and then left right will be 9px and then the background background will be rgba 3 155 155 so you can choose uh, any color you want and uh, this is what I, I chose depending on my theme then let's add a border radius to these buttons so border radius will be uh, 2 rem and then let's uh, set the color so that the text is visible color will be whitish fa i will use this uh, hash fa 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 and then we need to create some uh, uh, spacing so what i'll do is set padding top and bottom will be one rem and then left right we can say 2.5 rem so yeah there we go it's coming along and then uh, you can see it's above our text so what we how we can fix that is use this uh, display to be inline inline block so there we go it's now at the bottom let's create a margin top to be 
strukture. So there we go. This is coming along. And then uh, the text transform will be uppercase. And uh, we can transition the background color so that uh, when we place a hover, it will have some cool uh, transition. So here I'll say transition. background color and we give it a time of about 650 milliseconds and then we can set the font weight to be 500 so I missed a semicolon And then we can place a letter spacing letter spacing to be 2px so this is now cool all we need to do now is to add a hover let me see what we have here and you can see now this uh, came along now let's add a btn hover dot btn i'll scroll down so that you see clearly btn hover uh, color will remain to be hash fa 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 but the background color will be uh, RGBA one eighty nine seventy two zero. So you can see a nice hover effect. And also uh, the same to this one so let's now finish by starting this scroll button or a scroll icon so dot scroll down this is the class that we gave it scroll down uh, we select the eye which is the icon and uh, will give it a color a color to be f a f a f a and there is a hash just before the first f we set a transition of color to be 650 milliseconds we set a margin top margin top to be 2rem so that there is a good spacing between the buttons and uh, this one and then we set a font size font size to be 3.5 rem so it's much visible now let's set the hover so at the bottom here dot scroll down scroll down we select the eye and add a hover and then all we will do is to change the color so color will be R G B A. And uh, that is this particular one that we used here, 189, comma, 72, comma, 0. So this actually can be just RGB because we are not adding an alpha, but either will do. So now when we hover, 
you can see uh, there is a cool transition of color and uh, the background so basically that's it for the uh, landing page and this is the desktop view so the mobile view we will handle that later so that it's uh, smaller so you can see now these pages are uh, identical so uh, we are done with this uh, first section of this series I hope you enjoyed it I hope you have learned something and uh, yeah that's it for this video have a nice day have a nice week and uh, happy coding always stay awesome